So now, how do we turn this render into a cell shaded render without going into any material settings? So what we can do is we can go in here to our filters, and right now we don't have any filters turned on, so we can turn on that first one, and by default it's probably going to be noise. Go ahead and click that, and choose flat shading. Now we haven't gotten too deep into too many of the filters just yet, uh, so I guess we'll start here. Uh, flat shading, you're going to see the blend mode uh, by default is to replace, and we'll go ahead and keep that. But of course, like we talked about before, you can change that to multiply, lighten, darken, all that good stuff. Now it's also set to 100. If you crank that down, it's going to start blending back your original render with the flat shading. Although if we're trying to achieve a cell shaded look, let's go ahead and keep that cranked up to 100. Uh, same thing with opacity, you can drop that down, but there's really no reason to. You can change your front and your back color. You can just click here, you can do a red color, and you can do a blue. But as you can see, it's not going to do much of anything. It's actually under modifiers. If you choose colorize, that's where that uh, front and back color comes into play. Um, but we'll get to that in a bit. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go out of the modifiers there. We'll change this back down to the back color will be black, front color will be white. We'll get ahead of ourselves here. And then underneath the modifiers, you're going to see we have a number of options. Now, some of the filters, the modifier will be grayed out. I think if we choose noise, you're going to see there is no modifiers. And in fact, and in fact it doesn't even have a back color. It just has a front color, which you've already talked about. Uh, but again, if we go back down here to flat shading, uh, you're going to see we have front color available, back color available, and we have modifiers. Now, the modifiers are going to change depending on what filter you have selected. In the case of flat shading, we have number up here in the upper left, you have number of shades, and that's pretty self-explanatory. If you drop that down to two, you're basically going to have a dark, a light, and a shadow. If you put that in three, you're going to have a dark, medium, and light. And of course, the more you crank that up, the more it's going to be doing like that posterize effect that you got in the material mixer. Or now that I mentioned that, if you go in here to filter, you do have a bunch of posterize options, but we're going to go ahead and stick with flat shaded for now. Uh, we'll drop this number of shades back down to three. And right now, this filter is affecting the entire uh, screen. So foreground, background, all that good stuff. If you just want this filter to apply to just our foreground object, we can take this mask and uh, have that just affect our object here. Back underneath modifiers, you're going to see we have a min and a max intensity and an exponent. Essentially, your dark, medium, and light values are all spread evenly. If you want to change that and have it favor more dark values or light values, if you drop it down to a lower value, you're going to see it's going to favor the light range. If you go to a higher value, it's going to favor your dark ranges. It's still going to be three shades, but uh, you can kind of mix that as needed. Let's go ahead and set that back to one. Uh, you can also push your min and max intensity to kind of clamp those values as well. So if you take this max intensity, you can crank that down and you're going to see your lights don't quite go to full white or full white in this case being your document background color, which we had set earlier. And then of course the min intensity, if you drop that down, all your darks are going to get very dark. So if you want to have a very contrasty image, you want to take that min intensity and drop it down. Or if you want to have a low contrast image, you can take your min intensity and you can uh, crank that up. But for now, we'll just go ahead and keep that at 0.5. Uh, colorize we talked about, if we turn that on now, uh, it's just going to look the exact same because we are dealing with a back and a front color. If you wanted to change these, you can say like a dark blue and maybe a light blue. And I'll give you that effect. And then under modifiers, you can also say uh, colorize gradient and you can include the shadows in the range. So you can see when I turn this one on, those that background color is going to include the shadows. If I turn that off, the shadows are going to be multiplied over the background color result. But let's go back here and we'll change this back to black and then our front color to white. And we'll go ahead and turn off colorize, colorize gradient. Now, one thing you can do that we mentioned earlier is you can go up here to your render properties. And if these shadows are a little bit too intense, remember you can go back into your shadow properties underneath this menu. And you can change that. Uh, so the floor strength is set to 1. Let's go ahead and set that to 0.5. And also, let's take our global strength and set that to 0.5. And then we'll BPR render again. And that'll go ahead and lighten those values up for us. 